Me and Kasem noticed that they said that the leopard was sitting in a hot 100 degree van. You want, you want one? Hmm, I'm gonna have one too, that's some good stuff. Deepa is just one gorgeous tiger girl. This is Deepa's first time in the pool since having her cast off. What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you guys are having just an absolutely amazing day. Now for today's video, I am going to be debunking the new film on Netflix, which is Tiger King. Now I'm sure all of you guys, unless you're living under a rock, have heard of the film Tiger King and especially with everyone being in quarantine all over the world, it's pretty crazy that this many people have seen the film. I am actually very good friends with Doc Anno and his family, Mario Tabro. I actually work with Mario, and I actually filmed for the documentary three different times, but my scenes never made it in. But they got a lot of stuff wrong with the film, so we are going to be debunking that film today. But before we debunk the film, I have a special ad for all of you. And today's video is paid for and sponsored by an incredible RPG game on the App Store, and that is Raid Shadow Legends. Being on coronavirus quarantine has me in a little bit of a bind. I don't know what to do with my time. Are you stuck in the same quarantine cycle that involves sleeping all day, watching TV, and scrolling on Instagram? Well, I have got the perfect game for you. Raid Shadow Legends is a RPG game on the App Store, and oh my gosh, it is one of the most fun games ever. And did I mention that Raid Shadow Legends is free to play on both the App Store and a mobile desktop site? And this game has really helped me get my mind off the coronavirus craziness. And as you can see, the battles in this game are just absolutely epic. And you can use the blue shards to unlock champions. And what do you use those champions? champions for well all the champions that you unlock you can use to fight your battles or if you don't like your champions you can take those champions sacrifice them to upgrade the champions that you do like and my three favorite champions that we unlock today is without a doubt magma blood take a look at that guy right there we've got magma blood we have gore mass look at that crazy looking wolf as well as skull swarm go to the video description click the links and you will get 100,000 silver coins two clan boss keys 10 mystery shards and a free awesome new champion the Executioner. The highly anticipated battle pass for Season 1 is here, and you can win awesome free rewards such as energy refills, upgraded artifacts, gems, as well as new champions, all by fulfilling daily challenges. So I'm over here at Mario's house right now, and me and Mr. Kasim, the white-handed Gibbon boy, are just hanging out on the couch, having a good old time, relaxing with each other on this cool afternoon. And the very first thing that we wanted to go over that the documentary Tiger King got wrong was in the very first opening scene when they were talking about the snow leopard. Me and Kasim noticed that they said that the leopard was sitting in a hot 100 degree van with the AC off, and the leopard was basically cooking in the van. Well, that is entirely wrong. If you take a look at this right here, Mark McCarthy McCarthy made a post on Facebook explaining what happened. It says that the director claimed it was a 100 degree day when it was more like the mid 80s. He says, how could someone do that and insinuates the leopard was in distress. Now this leopard actually came from our facility, ZWF, and the leopard was in perfect health and Mark also says that he purposely leaves out the fact that the van is spray foam insulated, that the AC is going full blast and it is parked under a shaded tree. Anyone that knows me knows he would never leave a snow leopard in a hot van. Now I don't know Mark personally, but I know a lot of people that do in Mark from what I understand is an excellent animal caretaker and he would never do that. So that's one way that Hollywood will sensationalize a story and make the whole situation seem a lot worse. They're making Mark seem like this bad guy that's leaving a leopard in a van and Kasim, do you think Mark would ever do that? I don't think so either, buddy. So it's just really terrible that they paint Mark as this bad guy that's leaving this leopard in a hot van when in fact the leopard was in a very cool place and from what I understand, Mark has a very, very cold lockout for the leopard. So whenever the leopard wants to get nice and cool, he can go inside the lockout. Like Mark was saying in the film, snow leopards that are born in Florida and are acclimated to it really don't need the cold just because they've been here their whole lives. Isn't that right, Mr. Kassem? Kassem, you got some, some big old arms right there, buddy. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? I love you, buddy. And another thing that I noticed in the film that they got wrong is when they were talking about Doc Antle's property. I know Doc Antle very well. I know all of his people, Moksha, China, Cody. I know all of them. In the film, they made it seem as if Doc is running a cult. I've gone up there and stayed with them. I'm gonna go up there soon again. It is not like that at all. And they, they make it seem as if Doc makes them wear clothes. If you saw the scene in the documentary where they actually talk about the clothes that they're wearing, that was actually on Halloween. If you see Cecil, she had the pink hair and she was wearing the whole tiger costume with the teeth. That was on Halloween during their night safari and, and they failed to tell you that and it made it seem as if Doc is making them wear these teeth and these crazy costumes all the time. That's not the truth. Really what it is is they're just their animal caretakers. They live on the property and 
it's a 24 7 lifestyle with these animals as you can see we're just here hanging out feeding them when you have these animals it is not a job it's not a nine to five it is 24 7 if you want to build these relationships with these animals so they really made doc seem as if he's this crazy guy i've been up there doc has a world-class facility with an amazing staff um, incredible animals and if any of you guys do want to visit Myrtle Beach Safari and you had any doubts about it don't let the documentary steer you from going over to Doc Animals facility oh, hey buddy you want you want one hmm I'm gonna have one too that's some good stuff real good stuff there you go hmm. So now that we broke down some of what the film got wrong with Mr. Kassem, we are going to go break down the rest with what the film was mainly about, and that is tigers. We've got a bottle to feed Miss Deepa right now. Deepa is the Snow White Tiger. If you guys have been following the channel, you will know that she broke her leg. So we're going to be giving her a nice bottle treat right now, and it is finally the day we are going to be cutting her cast off. So we're going to uh, we're going to head in right now. This is Deepa right here. She is a gorgeous Snow White Tiger. As you can see, there's some flies. That is totally normal for tigers living outside in the wild. Wild, they'll have some flies on them but as you can see she has that cast that cast is coming off today and this is her temporary outdoor enclosure when she goes back to the zoo she's gonna have a ginormous habitat this is just for the daytime while we're here Vanessa's here with a ball awesome you can just throw it over let's see oh oh gosh oh the ball just exploded Deepa has her nice, awesome ball right now. You having a good time with that ball? Deepa just loves a ball. Something as simple as a ball is just so entertaining for a tiger. Now, one thing I want to go over in the film that they did not get right is the number of tigers that are living in the United States. The film said that there's five to 10,000 captive tigers in the United States. Well, that is just entirely wrong. 10,000 tigers. This is not the 1980s where everyone has tigers and exotic cats and monkeys in their backyard. This is 2020. There's a lot of laws in place. So based on the 2016 FCF Big Cat Census, there is a grand total of 5,144 big cats total. That's including lions, tigers, jaguars, cougars, panthers. All of that is included in that number. But the film is trying to make it seem as if there's 10,000 captive tigers just living in people's backyards. Of those 5,144, 2,004 of them live in big cat sanctuaries. I'm gonna put a little diagram on the screen for all of you guys to see. 1,173 of them are within private possession and zoos, which would be AZA facilities like Zoo Miami, San Diego Zoo. There's about 1,967. So the film got that all wrong. It makes it seem as if there's just people having all kinds of tigers and animals just all in their backyard, which is just entirely not true. Hi, Deepa, hello. But no one should just have a pet tiger. As you can see, they're incredibly powerful and they're just not like a house cat. You want your ball? Go get that ball. I mean, Deepa is just one gorgeous tiger girl. Now, why is it that they want to give us those five to 10,000 numbers? Well, that number 10,000 is used by animal right groups such as PETA, Carol Baskin over at Big Cat Rescue. They want to try to end the private ownership of big cats and end people having relationship with animals. Carol Baskin are trying to get the Big Cat Public Safety Act Pass. And what that's going to do is that's going to end the private possession and interaction with big cats. In Carol Baskin's mind, she wants to be the only one standing that has big cats. Now, what we're trying to do here is we're just trying to up the numbers of big cats, but she thinks we're just abusing them. I mean, does this tiger look abused? So right now we're gonna cut Deepa's cast off. She might like it, she might not. Um, but one of the main things is, is why do we have these tigers in the first place? Well, one of the main reasons is, is tigers are losing their habitat on a daily basis. Tigers in the wild, there's less than 4,000 of them, and each day, more and more of their historic range is being cut down for the palm oil trade, as well as people poaching them. But it is just a terrible, terrible trade. China actually, because of the coronavirus, just banned the consumption of wild animals. So hopefully that's going to drive down the tiger bone trade, the tiger fur trade, elephant tusks, as well as rhino horns. So Deepa, I'm trying to help you get your cast off. It's time. We're, we're just trying to help you out. I know you know that. Lorena is out right now trying to distract Deepa while we cut her cast. Deepa is thinking we're hurting her. She thinks we're just cutting your cast off, girl. We're trying to help you out. Okay, we got that part off. Deepa is one crazy over dramatic tiger. We just got Deepa's cast off, so right now we're going to have to actually kind of slowly peel this part off. This part is there, and you can see Deepa's leg. Obviously, the fur is pushed down. This has been on here for the past about month. Deepa was also shaved as well, so you can see that her fur has not fully come back. But we are just so, so happy that this tiger girl now has her cast off. You can see this was just 
one incredibly thick cast right here. Deepa, I'm so glad you made an awesome recovery. You're walking so great on your leg. This is Deepa's first time in the pool since having her cast off. Tigers, if you didn't know, are just incredible swimmers. Oh my gosh, this is some good feeling water, huh? Now, what our main focus is and what all of everyone that loves animals focus should be, not getting in pissing matches with each other, saying who should have cats and who shouldn't. We should all be focusing on the propagation and, and protecting these animals in the wild because these animals are on the decline and if we don't protect these animals, who cares who has what cats? If we're not protecting them in the wild and if they're not going to live in the wild, then what are we doing here in the first place?